Wendy Jo New, and I am a goldsmith. I not only work at Metalworks at my own private bench, but I also teach in the classroom and teach private lessons. Yeah. These are best sellers, especially during this pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Most recently, because we were uh, waylaid from coming to the studio, I actually did a much needed overhaul of my website. And the other thing I did was take some more advanced CAD classes, computer assisted design classes for um, basically designing jewelry on a computer aided instruction that could then print out a wax that, um, isn't natural for me to do, but since we were at home, and I was sitting at a computer, I took that. In terms of actual fabrication though, I've been working on um, certain pieces that I've engineered to be able to be used in multiple ways. So it's a single component. Um, it could have color added to it. It could have patina added to it. And it's also structured, I do a lot of architectural geometric type work where they're engineered to interlock with each other in different ways. So there are doubles, quadruples, the way they interlink, these all could be put so it's like a puzzle. Um, so they could be used in multiple ways. I tend to work um, contemporary fine jewelry, pretty architectural, subtle elegance, um, simple lines. So the focus is on the actual overall piece or a particular stone. Um, I do have an organic geometric line, so it has a little more curve, but it's still crisp and clean. And I designed it so that it could be just metal with a lot of airspace for part of the design. It could be silver, gold, um, but I could also add color. Resin inlay is a process that I use in um, a few lines of my jewelry and I'm known for that. So I add pigment to resin and add it to already fabricated pieces. This is, um, this particular element is a single element where I've added resin with pigment into a few of the re open receptacles and left air and have a pair of earrings. I have similar that are more on the horizontal with different color. And then what I've done is um, I built it so I could then interconnect them. So this is a kinetic type necklace. You can see it moves, but so when it's on the neck, it hangs, um, but has a little bit of kinetic work. And then similar ones with color added. And here's like a more coral line. So it allows me to do a lot with the same one element where I'll either fabricate earrings. And I also did, and I don't have one here, the little round holes. I did the diameter of those so that I could actually use a stone setting burr and set little gemstones in there for a particular size gemstone. They were designed to have multiple use, for, for lack of a better word. Um, so that I, I've been doing this for the past year, year and a half or so, and I've been um, over time changing what I do with the elements. And then in terms of stonework, because um, I like gemstones as well, but I do more contemporary type work. I've been working on um, geodes that have high carat gold uh, overlaid onto the natural crystals and platinum onto those. But the part that I have been enjoying and working on, the part that I actually make, are fabricated out of gold or silver um, architectural cage settings that hold the geodes. So those are my more recent type work I've been focusing on. So the merging of my, the work that I normally do, which is hand fabricated and CAD, um, I still don't use CAD very often, but it's very beneficial in terms of custom work that I do. So for example, I'll get a commission for someone who wants to design a one-of-a-kind ring with some old gemstones from grandma's ring that's been sitting in the vault. We take the stone out and go over um, possibilities once I get their sense of design, what they like in terms of it, do they like ornate, do they like real plain. But to actual, um, a lot of people can't, 
envision things as 3D. Um, so I carve waxes. So for example, here's a wax that I've carved. But when you're showing people stuff and it's not a fully decided upon design, to carve a lot of these is so time consuming where on CAD it could be designed and you could do a rendering and then alter things a little bit. And there are certain things you could do on CAD um, in terms of time that it takes to do versus fabricating out of metal or carving a wax that are very intricate that are better to do on CAD and then a wax gets printed exactly as it was designed, made specific to the stones that we have, and then get that cast. So there are some benefits to it, and um, I don't use it very often. I generally pay someone to do it for me, and I always let the client know if that's happening, because it's still my design. I still have to give all the specs and the math that goes with it. Um, but I really wanted to be able to do it myself, to design. It's just another way and my brain tends to work more in an analytical way, so um, I do more on the engineering end of things, and the art comes out that way. Okay. And then a lot of fabrication, no matter what, to attach stuff together entails soldering, and we use a lot of fire in this place, of all different types of gases. So I'm gonna heat it, you're gonna watch it turn into a molten ball, and I'm gonna plop it in the water, and it should, it'll splat, it's cool. All right, so with this, Silver scrap, um, things can be melted and turn into another usable component or sent to the refiner to get money and buy some more metal. So I'm going to melt this with the torch. We use this to solder, to melt, to heat from underneath. You could even use it to do enameling or torch fire enamel. So this is going to be on a very high heat on a charcoal condensed block that acts like a little oven right underneath and you can see it's starting to melt and what happens is the metal all tries to go together it's a nice spinning ball and I'm gonna take this and let it drop into some water and you get a natural water casting and it gets quenched which is the process of putting it into cold water after it's hot it will splay and form an abstract shape, but sometimes it forms a really neat cup or something that looks like a usable component that you could set a pearl onto. So I'm gonna do one more and see what happens with it and that'll be it. So it's just gonna be, do it one more time. I'm gonna hit it just a little bit more, make sure it's really ready. Mm -hmm. So that broke into two, but it formed a really neat component that might be used alone as a neat stud or drill a portion, add a little stone into there. This gets put into a pickle. It's like a light acid that cleans it all off and then could get polished. So I might even do more, try to get a flatter piece. But anyways, that's it. I think I have a tie for what is the most valuable thing of having my studio here. So the first one that's a tie is to have access to an amazing building that has the tools, the torches, the buffing equipment, the lapidator, all that stuff to my, um, at my access that I could use at any time and have a separate place to come and work. So it's really like coming to an office that's really a cool office. Um, the other one that's tied, I do have to say, it is a community studio and being with people, all who have different personalities, different um, levels of metalsmithing, but being in um, a workplace, for lack of a better word, of people to be around. It's, it's just a really nice sharing of ideas and just to be among people where it's normally a lonely sport.